Hmm. What if I told you there was an easy way to lay down your hi-hats in any DAW that you choose? Well, allow me to demonstrate. So I have this beat right here. Let me go ahead and play that real quick. And it needs hi-hats. I'll show you a plugin linked in the description called Hats. And here it is. Uh, how it works is it's tied to your MIDI. So you have time signatures. You can pitch up, pitch down, patterns. And you can combine them. Let's hear it back. If you want to pitch stuff up and down, yeah, that's one of those things that we do when we make our hi-hat patterns. So what I'm going to do is drop the octave on my keyboard and make sure that I have pitch up and pitch down selected. So let's go ahead and do that and I will overdub what I just did. Oh yeah, and it gets better too. Now let's say you don't like the hi-hats that are in this pattern. So it's as easy as just dragging and dropping your hi-hats that you like inside of hats. Let's hear it. And it's $20 right now. That's a good price for this plugin, oh yeah. So let's talk more about the user interface. So this is Hats in the Flesh by Benetton Audio. And you can see it's pretty easy to understand. So what I'm gonna do is cover this right here, which is a randomizer button. So if I was to hit the randomizer button while the beat is playing, You can clearly see that it is randomizing all of the parameters and the sample. The next thing you want to do is this right here. You can pick out different samples by going into this UI right here. You go into this uh, menu option and then you can pick out different hi-hats. You have another feature right here, which I haven't explored yet and it is the modulation. So you get different modulation sources. Uh, you can change the, the steps up from nine steps and the speed and other things too. You have pan design where you can choose the panning. So you can activate that, deactivate that at free will. And you also have pitch designer right over here. You'll see where you can change the pitch, the randomness, you can hit a random button and change it. So that is a thing that I want to show you. You can choose to reset it. Uh, you have filter design where you can change the filter. And you can also choose between a plethora of filters. So let's go ahead and do pan design. Mess with that. Mess with the speed of it. Smoothness, the intensity, adding more intensity, which I presume that will be like an amount, gives you more panning. You can hear that if you're on a good pair of studio monitors or headphones. So this can do a wee bit of modulation. You have search right here where it allows you to pick out different presets, I presume.
So it's not just for hi-hats. You can just get some different percussive ideas from this. You also have this menu right here, which just tells you all your configurations. Uh, you can change the UI right here, the UI size. So let's resize it right now. And whoa, <laughs> that is very big. And then you have different time signatures too. Uh, if you pick this right here off the menu, you have half. So let's go ahead and play this right now. The next area I want to talk about is this right here. So uh, you have your effects section uh, where you have room reverb, where you can activate reverb. Let's go ahead and hear that. And basically it's just a reverb and expanding the room makes it more prominent in the mix. So. Uh, be careful of that. You also have delays. So let's hear the delays with this. And it's pretty cool because uh, this gives you uh, more than enough for you to affect it in a positive manner so you can have different sounding percussive rhythms and not just kind of plain hi hats or have to rely on any third party plugins or first party plugins. Next you have lo-fi, so let's hear that. And I mess with the dry parameter, which uh, bringing it all the way here makes it louder. And I don't want my highest to ever be that loud in my mix. Next, you have the filter section. So let's go ahead and activate that and hear that. Some pretty cool ideas can come from just adding a low pass filter to it. Obviously the high pass filter is not gonna work uh, with hi hats because hi hats are mostly mid and higher frequencies. The next thing you have is gain. And just like the name suggests, it makes it louder too. The next one is tune. And as you can imagine, it affects pitch. And then we have this weird take, which is whiff. Let's go ahead and hear whiff and it's stereo widening. And let's go ahead and add two times. Let's hear that. Strange take, but hey, I'll take that. Next is the feature that I kind of covered earlier when I was talking about this doohickey right here, which allows you to pick the hi-hats. Well, you can do random hi-hats too. So if you just want to randomly generate something, uh, you can control that. So let's go ahead and. And you can also zoom in just in case. And I presume that yes, you can. Uh, trim your hi-hats or trim your sample down. So this actually makes for a pretty decent sampler at that. Uh, and you don't necessarily have to put hi-hats in here. You can just drag and drop snares, 808s, anything uh, if you want. You can also reverse the sample. So let's hear that. I believe this is random, but let's just explore it and see what happens. And 
that's actually pretty cool. Uh, this next thing is layers. I'm not sure about this feature right here. I just turn layers on and I can. So the next thing on the list is amplitude envelope. So let's tr go ahead and try that. Uh, I tried messing with it, see if you can mess with the graphic, but uh, you're better off just using these controls down here. So I wanna take down the sustain of this and make it a little tighter. So what I do is just add some less decay. I won't add any attack because that will make the sample sound something like this right here. And I mess with release, which ultimately just gives it a little bit of a tail at the end. So I do want to add that you can turn off mono and have it play polyphonically. And then you could do random velocity just by turning on velocity. And that sounds like this. So ultimately, you can affect it in many different ways. And then we have this keyboard section, which has a section for pitch down, pitch up patterns in division uh, the one thing that i would say that is important is you know you have 12 notes in an octave so my keyboard is a 37 key keyboard so basically just to get to the uh the pitch section where i can pitch stuff up and down i would have to go two octaves down and to get to division i would just be in this area right here and if you're asking me, yes, I do recommend this keyboard for both FL and Ableton Live, even though this is a Ableton Live based keyboard. It obviously works in FL Studio, but it allows me to do different things production wise. So tell me how you feel about this plugin. I definitely want to hear from you guys in the comment section. Uh, are you willing to check it out? Uh, there is a demo version available. So, you know, just check out the demo first and then decide if you want to buy it or not. Uh, one of the biggest pros for this plugin is the price point right now, at least it's $20 and hopefully it won't go back to like $80. I think that's a little bit too much for this plugin. $50 seems about the roundabout price for this uh, because it is a strong utility tool that makes me want to make beats in FL Studio because I'm mainly an MPC head. Like I, I make beats on groove boxes and note repeat on groove boxes it's a no-brainer like you can't have a great brew box without some type of repeater or something and hats comes from that inspiration uh, i really like the samples that come with it and the fact that you can manipulate the hi-hats too uh, makes it for a great tool for production especially if you do a certain type of style of production and speaking of which it's not just meant for trap beats like there's a different way to you to conform to different styles of rhythmic percussion or percussiveness. And that's what I really like about it. Uh, the cons, man, it's kind of hard to say any cons here. I saw that uh, people were complaining about the samples that come with this. And then I say to myself, dude, you don't realize that you can drag and drop your own samples in there and it doesn't necessarily have to be hi-hats. Bruh, like try it out before you just get upset about it. It, it makes everything easier. And that's the strength of a good plugin. So do I do, 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 give this, give this the, stamp the stamp of, stamp of approval? Then into an audio, hats off to you guys, pun intended. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a 100. Really good.